Hi and welcome to the digital job site. The boards are straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. This is the video portion of a blog post that I hyped on the digital job site blog at finehomebuilding.com and that is hyping a free visual construction calculator at the digital job site. And as you know by now, uh, I'm just trying to highlight the value and function of using SketchUp as a visual construction calculator rather than using a key-based uh, key calculator. There's a lot of benefits for that. And this video will be a, a quick start guide for using SketchUp as a visual construction calculator. And in the spirit of the season at the digital job site and everywhere in the spirit of Christmas, we put the, I put the SketchUp tools underneath the Christmas tree and hope that uh, maybe I'll find a board stretcher in my, in my stocking this year. I'd sure like to have one on the job this week. But silliness aside, I'm going to just delete the Christmas tree and go to a blank workspace to show how I use SketchUp often for a visual construction calculator. And the first problem that I talk about solving this way is to divide 137 and 13 16 inches by 11. And to do that, I merely start drawing a line, type in the value, which is 137 space, 13 slash 16, enter. And that makes the line the dimension I requested. Now I can right click on this line and go to Entity Info. It'll bring up this Entity Info dialog box, and that shows that this line is the length I want to divide. I want to divide it by 11, so to do that, I'm just going to right click on the line, get this little drop down box, and select Divide. And these little red boxes show up along the line, and as I move the cursor back and forth, the number of segments changes. Eight, nine, ten, eleven segments. Once I get eleven, just left click it. So the line is now divided in eleven equal segments, and by clicking one of them, I get my length, which is twelve and seventeen thirty seconds, about twelve and thirteen sixty sevenths. And that means that it's within a sixty-fourth of an inch. It's less than a, that answer is within a sixty-fourth of an inch of the division. The, it calculates it that way. The, the approximation is set to the smallest dimension that you select in the model info. Here I've got the precision set at one sixty-fourth of an inch. If we change this to a sixteenth of an inch, then it changes the value. It says it's about 12 and a half inches. So all that's doing is rounding it off to a reasonable number that you choose. So that's how I do division. One way to uh, a way to do division with this is a construction calculator. And the next uh, problem I talked about solving is a multiplication problem. I'm going to delete this line by selecting everything and deleting it. Multiplication, I'm just going to draw a line the length I want to multiply, which I talked about being 3 and 1764, so I type in 3 space, 17 slash 64, enter, and that gives me the line I want to multiply. And by taking the move tool, hitting the control key and moving this line over just a little bit, typing enter, and we want to have 19 of them. We started out with one, so I'm going to add 18 more by typing in 18x, enter. And what that does is just multiply that out with duplicate copy. So all i got to do is circle those, and you can see up here in the Entity Info box, I've selected 19 of them for a total length of 60... 62 and 364, so I was just making sure I did that right. And if you want to 
um, multiply that same thing by different numbers. It's pretty easy to do but just by selecting how many you want to multiply by and then you can verify your count up here with the edge count. But that's a pretty easy way of uh, multiplying with SketchUp as a visual construction calculator. And the next uh, problem I mentioned, it's basically a division problem, but um, I solve it kind of the same way, and I'm just asking the question backwards. What's one seventh of 51 and 9 sixteenths? So you're on to me here. I'm just going to type in 51 space 9 slash 1 6 enter. And to divide it by 7 or find out one, what 1 seventh of it is, I'm just going to divide and go to 7 segments. Pick 1. And the answer is 7 and 23 64 of an inch. So 1 seventh of 51 and 9 sixteenths is 7 and 23 64 Pretty simple. And uh, I think more than anything, I'm hoping to communicate the idea that this can be used as a construction calculator, not that you would uh, do this just to divide a couple lines. There's, there might be simpler ways to do that, but as you're working, uh, it's a great feature to have. And what I mean by that is in uh, well, doing something like a set of stairs. And I covered this in a tutorial I called the stair, math, stair Master, which would um, give you more detail on this information. But to show you quickly here, uh, I'm drawing a line in the, in the vertical axis. And let's say you'd be working with a a total rise on a set of stairs of 9 feet 8 inches. And we know that uh, the stair code where I live uh, says the stair can't exceed 8 inches in height for a residential. So I'm just going to right click on this line, grab the divide function, and then watch in the little in the little box, the segment box there right by the cursor. It's showing me uh, the number of segments and the length. And so I'm just going to keep making this smaller until I get one that's under 8 inches. So 14 is 8 and 9 30 seconds. And 15 is 7 and 40 seconds, 47 64. So we can just use 15 segments. And I'm just going to type 15 enter into the box. And then um, select one of those, and I can see here that it's 7 and 40, 7 64. And if I decide I'm going to use a 10 inch run, I can just click a 10 inches here, 10 enter. And so with this, with this calculation, I can quickly get the rise height for my stairs and find um, by using a given run dimension, I can quickly find out the angle of the stairs, for instance. I'm going to want a vertical surface to index my protactor to, so I'm going to just raise this box up, use it for this, and I'm going to draw, taking the protactor again there, hold on, shift on the end here, I click it at the base of the line, and then I move up to the first green dot, which is the first end point. And I know that this segment is, is our rise, this is our run, and the angle, which I forgot to look at the value control box, is 37.7 degrees. It says approximately, and that's, that's very accurate. Any angle layout tool, you would be hard pressed to uh, need an angle dimension any more refined than that. So those are some of the uses for uh, the construction calculator and there's an application for it. The other thing, other things that this is useful for, kind of getting a little mixed up here thinking and drawing at the same time so I hope you'll pardon me a little bit, but the uh, other thing we can use this for is to figure out area. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Let's say we want that oh, 29 by 37 and 3 30 seconds just to be complicated. So I've got this 
rectangle there by right clicking it into entity info it tells me that it's a hundred and a uh, thousand seventy five and a fraction of square inches it's pretty simple to do you can do the same thing with a circle of a given radius let's make this radius um, 19 inches and uh, 11 30 seconds enter gives us the the uh, this a circle with that diameter and if I just select the area of the circle I can see that it's 1162 and a fraction square inches I can also find very quickly uh, the length or the circumference of that circle and numbers of things like that and the uh, the more accurate I need that circumference the more segments I can put in the circle so let's just go 96 segments for the circle and can see that um, you can make a smoother circle but it still gives you the the circumference of it and uh, another thing about this if you have to figure the area of a uh, an unusual polygon <clears throat> I'm drawing the I'm just drawing a circle and let's call it 20 inch radius and if I wanted a pentagon that had a 20 inch radius around the points I can just draw a circle whatever radius I want and then in the in the circle box up here I can just put five enter and it'll make a pentagon of that shape and now just by doing that there's 951 and some odd square inches so you can find the area of any geometric shape you want by doing that same thing. I'm just putting in a, a radius and then changing this can be 12 if you've got to do a dodeca, uh, a dodecahedron I think that's called. Maybe that's a 3D version of it. But anyways it's all pretty simple to find out the, the area of unusual shapes using this visual construction calculator method. And I'm going to delete these. And the last thing I was going to show in this little video is, met, is, is dimensional conversion. So I'm just going to draw a line that's 100 inches long. And then by clicking that line, okay, there's my 100 inches. But if we go up in here to the model info, then we can set this into decimal, which will give us that's. Um, decimal inches we can go to engineering actually I should go back and <clears throat> delete that uh, delete this line and put in uh, an unusual length line to show this up a little bit differently I'm gonna go oh let's go 49 and 7 8 inches oh, what did I, I type something funny there <laughs> I'm gonna I'm back up here a little bit, got ahead of myself. So we're going to go back to model info and put this back in architectural. There we go. And minimize this box. Putting up a fight with me there. Okay, so now we're just going to go back to 49, 49, 7 eighths. And now we'll do the conversion. So that's showing 49 and 7 eighths in feet and inches. And we can go in there and go to fractional, which will show it up as 49 and 7 eighths. We can go to decimal, and this is decimal inches. And here we can go to centimeters, which will do a metric conversion for you in any base that's centimeters you can go to meters or whatever but it's pretty handy to the, and the more complicated of a dimension you're working with the more effective this is to to go be go back and forth between the different units and stuff but this way just it just shows how to do this visually and you could you could create any number of of scenarios here if we uh, went to all the circles, squares, pentagons. You can just have all those things scattered on your workplace. If you need to go back and get the dimensions you were working with er earlier, you can just click on those different objects and and s cycle through the conversion thing, and it'll give you a lot of information without re-entering 
figures on a construction calculator because you had them worked out one time and you can save the results. I hope that makes sense. So I wanted this to be a quick start guide. It's gotten a little bit long, but I hope this conveys the idea of using SketchUp as a visual construction calculator. I'm going to do another video to follow up on this and go through a few volume things and some irregular shape, area, and volume conversions. So I hope you'll come back for part two. And thanks for stopping by the digital job site.